In the 1990s, I was exploring a couple of job options in the Dakotas, working on the Native American reservations in that part of the country. While I was offered one of the jobs, I, I didn't go there um, for a number of reasons. But as I was exploring these jobs, I talked to people on the reservations and asked, how do you make it through the winters? The winters are long, they're cold, they're very windy. What's life like in those brutal winters? The response I got was interesting. The, the native people that I spoke with said that I needed to understand the rhythm of life around the reservation and in nature. That during the summer, there was activity, there was community, there was going and doing things, there was involvement. That was the sort of external way of living. But then during the winter, when everything was cold and frozen, that was the time to be indoors, to be with family, to tell stories, to work on creative things like creating art or crafts or, or exploring other aspects of life. It was an interior life. That lesson was something that really struck me and has stayed with me. So I've thought about that balance between the interior life and the exterior life. One of the things that I think is really helpful for us whenever all things fall apart, when things fall apart for us, is having an interior life. Now, some people think that an interior life is just about spiritual practice. And I want to think in broader terms around the interior life. I want to think in terms of everything that nurtures our heart, our soul, our inner spirit as being part of our interior life, the things that nurture our insides. And yes, spiritual practice is part of that, but so were things like art and music. And I've, I've talked to people who, who said how important fishing was for them because it gets them alone and quiet and to be with nature. And I know people who do woodworking and how centering that is for them. And so there are all kinds of things that really nurture that interior aspect of our life. You see, when we have nurtured that interior aspect of our life, when things fall apart and things inevitably do fall apart, then we have a rootedness, a groundedness that enables us to weather the storms of life so that when things become difficult for us, we, we have a place to be and a place to stand. We know who we are and we know what nurtures us. Now, whenever things fall apart, we just don't become instant meditators. We don't get into whatever it is that we do that nurtures us. But we have that sense of, of awareness with us so that it can help bring us back to that centered way of being, even though things around us are really messy. The other thing that having a healthy interior life does for us is it keeps us mindful that things are always changing. When we have a nurtured interior life, we, we have a greater sense of mindfulness in our life. And so we're more observant and aware of the changes that are happening within and around us. That's part of what an interior life does for us. So in this series, I, I talked about this idea of when things fall apart in our life, and they all do. And, and the first piece of understanding moving through this is the importance of seeing that all things change. And, and the other, another piece of it is looking at how our interior life supports us and sustains us through that. You know, whenever I was young, a young adult just starting out, I lived in an apartment building that had a, a pretty severe fire. Uh, now, I really was just starting out and had a basement apartment. The fire was on the top floor, so the flames didn't reach down to my level. But my apartment was drenched from the, the water. The water damage and the smoke damage was quite extensive, and I lost almost everything. Things fell apart. In the next day, a group of Roman Catholic Christian brothers, the religious order, 
invited me to their residence for dinner as a way to try to be a support. So I got there and was glad to have, you know, some time where I knew dinner would be and that it would be good food and, and I didn't need to do anything. And I sat with them for meditation before dinner. We went into the chapel and just sat in a circle. And because I had a spiritual practice, that time really helped me refocus. It didn't solve all the mess, all the stuff I needed to deal with with my apartment and everything that I lost. But there was something about the experience that helped me feel a sense of assurity that somehow things would work out and I'd be able to walk through the experience, that I had the inner strength. You know, the old joke is, how do you make it to, to Carnegie Hall? You practice, practice, practice. In a similar way with the interior life, how do you make it through life's difficult times? Well, with spiritual practice, you practice, practice, practice because it comes into play when times get tough. But so do all the things we do to nurture our inner spirit. Those are the things that we fall back on for resilience to be able to keep going. So I'm going to continue talking about when things fall apart in another video. It'll be the fourth in this series. And in that video, I'm going to talk about the role of support from others. So be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you're notified of that video. Like the video, share it with others, and know that I really appreciate that you took some time to be with me today. For all of us, at one time or another, things fall apart. So I think it's important for us to think about it and understand what we can do to be ready in those moments when life suddenly changes for us. Have a good day.